sleep. Is it? So when you're touring, you consistently on the road. You might not get to the hotel till like three o'clock in the morning. You might be in some cities to where, you know, a vegetarian meal isn't even there. So you got to substitute it with something else. What is that? Top's pink. Apparently. Bro, no. it was a bad breakfast burrito this morning. <laughs> I can't wait to go home, man. <laughs> Get away from these nasty ass niggas, man. Bro, I got sick, bro. Like, I'm struggling on stage when I rap because I keep coughing, so it's hard for me to not cough and I struggle, so I can't even give it my all when I'm on stage. I just have to like rap very lightly and not move around <coughs> too, too much. Go back on the motherfucking road. My hair crazy. I'm tired, nigga. I've been sleeping like hell, nigga. My neck hurt, nigga. Or my mama, nigga. I'm hurt, nigga. After two miles, to the right. Oh, uh, Detroit! Where's the weed? Oh, man. When they get busted for shit like that, it's not my job to make it hella easy on them so that they can, you know, feel comfortable doing that shit again. Because the manager said that they were gonna find them. $250 for smoking in the room. I told them that it was their true responsibility to take care of that. They said that they were just going to have you take care of that pay. Yeah, I mean, we'll, we'll, we're going to have to have another meeting when we can. We got in trouble a few times. Yeah, yeah, put a towel on that, Hopper. You know what the homies were telling me, man? They were, it was a smart idea. Is they brought a roll of fucking gaffer tape, G, and they just taped the fucking door. Yeah, I got in trouble. We had tons of weed in the room, tons of people smoking, and those alarms went off, and everybody ran. They just left the room, you know? Like, fools were just like Psh, psh, psh. They told me to come down here to get you guys to stop smoking, and if you guys didn't stop, you guys would just be arrested. Yeah. Y'all gotta get arrested. That's what I heard. I was like, oh, no, yeah. not again. And then Dizzy tucked everything away, threw the shit away, tried to air the room out, and then we were all just like posted up, like, what happened? Yeah. Dizzy was staying in that room too. Yeah, we gotta, kid. we gotta, we gotta have, have to have another meeting. No more. <laughs> and I got the blood. Fuck this hotel, I'm out. This shit was crazy. It was in Detroit. Yeah, I think I just dropped my album. It was, it was in 2010. It was crazy to see people just really excited to see me, and I, I, and I was like, wow, this shit is real. I didn't really feel the joy of owning the label like that until my album Raw came out, and then we did a tour in 2011, and we got back, and then I dropped a couple more videos, and things blew up, and I was like, oh, shit. I mean, even the initial videos that we had got a decent amount of views. I mean, did they get millions right out the gate? No. You know, I don't think it really took it to another level until it might have hops in four. Like that, that video took off. Uh-oh. I just always thought like, man, it'd be so dope to have an extremely ill rapper in a colorful ass looking Disney Nickelodeon type bedroom. I would jack off so much back at my parents' house and now my dick has a permanent imprint of my hand around it. Where if a little kid saw it and he muted it, it would look like it was just a cartoon of some guy having fun. But you turn the volume up and that shit's fucking like, ah! But then I made enough money for me to fund the tour. Now the lady show me the goodies under they wonder bra. I'm going to- He had so much that he had done already. So when people start looking into that, it's not just some cat that came out of nowhere. She said, what you want to do? She said, it's simple, Marcus. I want to blow it before you put it in like a Nintendo cartridge. Like this shit is becoming real. And then it just kept getting bigger and bigger. Ultimately, it's just a process of continuously building on small wins. That's what I always say. So you have Ilman of Hops and Four, and then you have the MI Psycho collab, which was big for Hop with Tech Nine and B.O.B. Right after that, it was the Double XL cover. And a few months after was Ilman Five. The Ilman of Hops and Five song. When that dropped, people were just like, whoa. And the likes were going up very fast. The next day, it had a million views. I was like, what? It started getting like a million views a day for like a whole week. We just learned that we can just do things our own way, what was comfortable to us. So if somebody here is doing things this way, and then people are saying, well, that's industry standards. Like, fuck that. We are the new industry now. Man, I hate rap, but if the shoe fits, wear it. 
I become a freak of nature, all the kids stare. I walk around bumping raw with the shit blaring, saying fuck school and dropping out like a miscarriage. I'm in bed. We got that so many times. People are like, you need to go to these meetings. Fuck that. Motherfucker, we on fucking Facebook and YouTube banging on niggas, saying, blowing up. I mean, women and Dame didn't actually talk like that to each other. Yeah, I said fuck you. Hey, Tamika, guess what? I'm, I'm a rapper now and I'm doing shit with my life. Stay high. Ha, ha, ha. Oh shit. We <laughs> cross some time zones tomorrow, bro. Oh shit. Yo, we get it. Oh, we going back some hours. We're going back an hour. Time to go back some hours, baby. We going back to the West Coast beach. Yeah. yeah. For me, like I grew up, you know, around no man, like at all. So I wasn't taught to be no man. So I'm teaching myself. When my mama kicked me out when I was 17, I ain't been back since. I went through a depression, a real life depression. Like, no family, no nothing. Just out in the world, I had a baby on the way. I was on some solo dolo shit. And I got bad shit on my mind, but I'm looking like I'm supposed to win. I did bad shit in my time. Now I'm dealing with it as an older kid. I spent rich. Before my daughter was here, man, like, Everything started changing because expectations start getting high. Like it was a lot of shit I didn't know about having a baby. God all on my side, you can hear the shit in my lap. And it just started making me look like less of a man. But God can't protect everything, so this four five on the side of me. Just out a lot of money today. But to the bills. Fuck it. gotta get paid, man. I consider successful just being a provider. I'm paying for daycare, rent, car notes, water bills. It got to the point where this rap shit just wasn't cutting me, yo. But I even tried to go get a little job selling like a little cleaning machine. And then my car broke down one day on my way to work. I quit that job and I stopped thinking about all the expectations and I just started doing my thing. I found both Dizzy and Jaren on the internet. I think the first video I saw from Dizzy was a song called Somebody or Nobody. It was just catchy, it was dope. Topic Roman Ram. Ram. I rep that Las Vegas, guarantee I hold it down. Saw Dizzy there, I started following him online. So when I saw him perform, it was a mall. You know, you can kind of see down from, from two or three, three stories above. So people were kind of looking over, seeing what was going on. And, and he just captured everybody's attention. You know, eventually just de decided to bring him out. Uh, uh, uh. It's Denver. Denver's always my favorite because, like, that's the first place that I ever did a show with Funk Volume. And I think that's when you kind of see, like, things are real, you know, when you, when you bring people to our shows because a lot of times you can't really capture the energy online. Wasn't like no little ass show. But that motherfucker was packed. He rocked the crowd, um, had a good time. Chemistry was good between everybody. 2011, November 25th. I turned 21 in that motherfucker. So we decided to sign them. I appreciate y'all having me on Fuck Volume. Yes, y'all boys put me on, man. Yeah, yeah. This was this where it started, huh, Dad? This is where it's going. Because we dropping your ass off. We're getting fired tonight, nigga. <laughs> Backstage, nigga. Backstage, nigga. Me and Hops, nigga. Jared Bitten on the beat. We finna do this motherfucking meet and greet right now. Bow down, pow pow. Get hit if you try to take in my style. Uh, you niggas taking my hate switching. I see you niggas, y'all. Lame as hell, boy. I say it well. Play your cards right. Out here living the star life. Trying to get my cards right. Dealing the friendships. Niggas is willing. Out here killing. Me and Hobson is drilling niggas in they soul. Putting niggas in they back. Uh, get up on the wall, nigga. Give me all of that. Uh, what's the fact, nigga? Tell me where you at. Girl say it slow down. Jim Ben playing, oh wow. We coming with like four styles. That's how you know it's about to go down. No looter, no afro, but I roll out. The cold style, make the fucking winner pour. My shit is pure. The kids endure. The shit I'm spitting, cause it's real life. And through my vision and my stories, you know what it feels like. Yes. Once I'm the king, son And if you listen to me one day, you might be one You 
might become something better than me If you stop living your life with envy Yeah, I learned from Dizzy I picked up the flow that he tried to spit well And the shit swell Shit swell, I'm sweating from the fact that I'm so hype I'm so nice, I'm so dizzy bright I'm so like nobody I'm just I The D I double Z to the Y Jerry Benton looking fly with the thriller jacket <laughs> I'm sick, I'm on the tour. I've been sick for like a week now. I'm so fucked up right now that I feel like crying. I need I need some emergency. I need to go to a doctor, somebody call me. I'm right here, I'm right here by the bar. Get some drink. You about to start now? The drinking, you know, every night, or the smoking every night. That shit will catch up to you. I pulled it off. I felt myself fucking up a little bit. It's cool. I'm gonna go medicate up and take a fucking serious power of sleep when I get back to the hotel. Might have been eating a water. I couldn't even finish my drink. That ain't like me. And so, next thing you know, you find yourself throwing up and, uh, Calling Dame, saying, Dame, I can't do the next city because I'm sick as shit. <laughs> the Fuck Volume Tour has officially begun. I gotta start off with a sad announcement. Jared Benton will not be here. And he's in the hotel. He's really feeling like shit. So y'all go to his Twitter, his Facebook. Make sure he feels better. Give, wish him, you know, good wishes and all that. But really, we, we're gonna give him help. There shit. were times I'll just push on, so... If I had to call out and not do the show, I was fucked up. That motherfucker was really sick. I don't know what was going on. I had some type of stomach flu, man. I just kept puking and I started feeling that fever, fluish feeling. And so I was like, yo, it, it's no way. I can't even push through that. Y'all ready for Dizzy Wright this motherfucker? I'm gonna wait for this moment, nigga. Yo, so, okay, so tell me what's happening here. Yo, all right, came all the way from Omaha, nigga. Jaren Ben was supposed to be here, and you know, I was trying to hear half ounce, quarter pound, blow, blow smoke real good, good, real good. You feel me? Darren, you fucking me up tonight, bro. I really fucking missing you, man. I only took two shots when I would have taken about 17 if you were here, man. So shit just ain't the same without you, bro. <laughs> Yo, we about to smoke that right now, man. Before, yes, I, before yes, I leave, man. Yes. Jaren. Right. Hey, 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 hey. Fucking up, bro. You urgent care, motherfucker. <laughs> I ain't been to urgent care one time in my entire fucking life. <laughs> in my entire life, I ain't never been to urgent care. And I ain't never missed a show either. I'm back. Back from the dead. Back in the game. Feeling real fucked up yesterday. The fever, sweating, throwing up. Just all fucked up, man. The next show, you got to make it up. So the next show, I'm just not only going hard for myself, I'm going hard for the fans that didn't get a chance to see me. Well, man, I thought we got to see you home. <laughs> Yo, we got to see you there, home. Go pick us up. I was like, man, I was loud. The night before last night, I was like three minutes away from waking up square. I was like, yo, call the fucking ambulance, dude. I'm fucked. All right, man, we feeling good tonight because we got the full team back again. Yeah. We got Jared Benton back on the team. He had a stomach virus. So he was crying and stuff like that. Sick, we got him back, though. We got him back. I was feeling like shit yesterday. Now I feel like a billion bucks. <laughs> I've been on like a crazy ass musical journey. I've been doing this shit for a minute. I've been grinding for a minute. When you're dealing with people that kind of don't get your vision, or maybe they don't understand what to do with you, you kind of sit in limbo. And that was one of my biggest mistakes, is sitting back, waiting on somebody else. Never let nobody take your destiny in their own hands. Fuck that. You go out and do your own thing. Yeah, I'm throwing D's on the Cadillac. Ride through the cater, nigga, bumping Bert Jackarack. I had did a video called Schizo. One of my fans saw it, and they said it reminded them of Hobson. So they posted the shit on Hobson's page on Facebook. Dick and Janice, I'm popping Xanax and speaking Spanish. Nalaka, nalaka, blah, I ain't say a word. A fucking nerd, I'm riding dirty with the moss bird. I found him online, started watching how he moved, so we don't necessarily want people that need funk volume, we want artists that want to be here and they understand it and kind of grind the same way we do. Dame flew me out to Arizona, and when I went back home, I kind of knew, like, yeah, I, f I feel real cool with these dudes. You know, pondered on it, and here I am, funk volume. At first, you know, 
they weren't fucking with me, but I went out on the road, proved myself. Once you lose your own self-confidence, you've been defeated. Man, fuck them, I'm, I'm jamming, I'm the shit. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. Once you feel that within yourself, it'll take over so the fans will start fucking with you. It's like seeing my little <coughs> Mick Jagger back when he was like, you know, he wasn't right there prime. yet. Yeah. Yeah. Prime. Nah, I ain't even my prime. Oh, 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 before, right? Yeah. Before Just he... in general as an adult, I've been through so much. I've been broke as fuck, damn near homeless. You know, this me before the leather pants. So when you go through shit like that, like a fan not feeling your shit is like, this is here before it really video. started happening right yeah, now. Yeah. This is here before it really started happening. In the time that we're in, it's not existing, but you who's watching this, it happened already. Bam! It oh! Happened already. That's the most happy Marty McFly this is still, shit. This is like here, right here. Like, you can still walk outside jail. Yeah. I can go to the store and get some motherfucking potato chips if I want to. Well, when you're, now that you're watching this in your mind, you're like, he can't do that. I can't that do must that have been now. shot years ago. This is before he started smoking and drinking and becoming <laughs> a porn star and saying, yeah. fuck rap. Before I went to porn. Oh, oh my life. <laughs> Yeah, I'm on a label and I'm working with people, so you have deadlines. I honestly say I probably had like three months to do a whole album. And it's done and it's dope. The studio right now. Nigga big blue red nigga over there. That's Jamie. So with the pressure of Dame and the expectation of him putting product out, it increased my work ethic. I never knew I could do an album in fucking three months and come out dope. But hey, fuck it, let's go. If everybody knew I was recording like this for the album, <laughs> they gonna hear the song and think it's a serious life changing song, but behind the scenes, this bullshit going on. <laughs> I'm, I'm doing this next to this serious ass recording session. It's just taking them that long, and it probably will take them that long to make the album. I'm still working on my Knock Madness album. I don't have a release date for it. So I know that traditionally there, there's cycles and there's timing and things like that, but I think with what Hop does and what we do, like, you know, We'll make it work. The whole delay of Knock Madness is strictly me. There's nobody else involved. It's just because I'm taking my time with it and I'm moving slow. Hobson is a perfectionist. He likes to do all the production. Yeah, I'm slick with it. My tactics. Who the fuck, who the fuck rapping on that shit? That white shit all. It's all about the ad libs. The ad libs. Fuck the rap. And just everything behind music. You can't duplicate that. I preferably would have wanted Hobson to ride the double XL wave and everything that's happened a lot harder, but you know, you gotta balance between, you know, what you think is best and it's what it is. Yeah. <laughs> whatever's gonna get the best music out, whatever he's comfortable with, you know, I'm willing to rock with it. You know, that raw album came from an angry place. Tamika Wright, you know, nigga was hot. Nigga got in the booth and had some shit to talk about. Now the nigga getting all this love. What do you talk about now? So Hop, I suppose, is um, figuring out how to do that. I don't want to just make regular rap music because I can do that very easily. and I've done it already. I want to make something powerful, but it is hard to make something powerful, so it's going to take time. <laughs> Hop 26 and he be chilling. You can't I'm catch that paper. I'm just like, trying to leave. You grow up and you do what you love to do, no matter what you are. 
I'm 22 and I'm a straight father. It just means we got kids to take care of and we got responsibilities to take care of. And we, we're money hungry because we want to be comfortable. Okay, the, the, this is the difference. Planet Earth and Pandora in the movie. Hand out the Have you seen, have you seen, have you seen, have you seen Avatar? Somebody who works for something and somebody who gets a hand out. <laughs> What's going on? You guys ready to roll? No, no. My life's been a roller coaster ride. Oh, man, man. My daughter got some shots today. The water bill is high as hell. You know, it needs to be paid, but I don't understand why it's higher than what it was when I left, when it's less people now. Where my responsibilities is taking care of bills. Hop could just hop up and go to Sweden tomorrow, you know? My ambition comes from a different place. That's why when I was having my daughter, I was pumped on that shit because I needed that love. I needed that unconditional love. Like, it make me want the family shit. Respect, man. Make me want to be in my daughter life full throttle. I just want to smoke weed, kick back, do this rap shit and be a pop, you know what I mean? <laughs> no, you didn't have fun. You had fun. I heard you took a nap. I heard you take a nap on the first day. It's hard, but I know that I'm doing the right thing. Put the phone down and just grab the bottom, huh? What I'm gonna be able to provide for my daughter is what's gonna be able to make her who she is. Oh. She grabbed her cup. She doesn't do bottles anymore. That's cool. I'm glad she had fun today. Once the show is over and you go into the next city, you either in the van or you either in the hotel room. So that'll give you time to think about shit like, damn, I ain't seen my kids, I ain't seen my wife. I've never been away from my family this long. I made up a song the other day. But hey, this is the life I chose, so I gotta get used to it, right? Yeah, ladies and gentlemen. That's the hardest thing, being away from my family. It get tough. I ain't been working like a dog playing it for seven days a week. Shit, my wife picked me up from the airport. I get in the car. My daughter, she's receptive. And my son, he's just like hesitant. Like, he want to, you know, you can tell he want to smile and he's so happy, but it's just this weird hesitant, like, we got to get back used to each other. Even if you talk to him every single day, it still feel a little foreign. Like, maybe because my son's younger, but that's what I noticed. Like, it'll take him at least a couple of hours till he warm back up. And he's like, yo, daddy's home. So. It's crazy, man. I guess it's just the learning and growing process. Girl, I miss you. I miss seeing you smile. I miss seeing you curse at me. I've been on tour for so goddamn long. It feels like a fucking century. I need some boots. Hey, I need some boots. Hey, hey. If you a whore, if you a whore, if you a whore. I'm still in the process of like trying to adapt. I mean, everything is transparent now. You have Instagram, Vine, Facebook, Twitter. It's like every second people want to know what you're doing. If you're not fully confident in yourself and if you don't know who you are, if you don't know what you're about, it's kind of hard to like put yourself out there to the public like that. I'm only human. I'm growing just like you. The only thing is, if I make a mistake or if I say something, you can always go back and look at it, and it's not erased. Like, I don't know what you did in your past. I don't know what you did in your past. But my, what I did in my past is on a lot of songs. So and now if I make a change, like I have recently, it gets clear, and then it makes people think that I'm contradicting myself because they're judging, thinking that the old is new or whatever. But yeah, people change. Oh. If you're not strong-minded, you can crumble, fail, get depressed. Five Just my break. It doesn't feel like how I imagined it would feel in my heart. Like when you're watching the MTV Awards or something. Yeah. <laughs> That artists go up and accept an award, you're like, man, if that was me, woo! Like you, you get that feeling. 
I have had huge accomplishments. I've been on the BET Cypher, I've been in magazines, sold out shows, and it kind of does give you kind of that feeling when everybody cheers when you come on stage. But overall, in my head, I'm just going, they're cheering over you, Marcus, what the fuck? They think you're cool. You had it, how the fuck did you make them think you were cool, Marcus? <laughs> It can seem cool at first, like, hell yeah, everybody knows who I am now. They're like, damn, but nobody knows who I am, really. And then you get to a point where you're just like, what the fuck am I even doing this for? I already know way too many motherfuckers who don't really know who I am. They're just fake friends. I don't need this shit. I'm just, fuck this. I'm not even rapping no more. It's weird, because I'm just picturing what's going to happen. Like, once I drop my album and put all this stuff out, and I'm thinking about all the different things, like, how is my personal life going to be? I don't know how I'm going to start a family and all that. Like, I don't, I don't know. Right now, I'm at this lost point. So right now, I'm just kind of... I'm just, I'm just, on, I'm just going, and I'm making music. I'm still gonna do it, but I don't know where I'm gonna be. I have no idea. But once you get a signature, once you're done up here, please go down. The stage doesn't hold very long. Back up, back up, back up. I don't know who this guy is right here. They not supposed to. Man. They know who you are, dog. They don't know who I am. I know who you are. I know these motherfuckers know who you are. Famous man.